Thanks so much to all my patrons. Join now to help support the channel and help pick the books I review on this channel. Link in the description. And I am done. Okay, so I just got done reading Blood of the Mantis. This is book three of the Shadows of the App series by Adrian Tchaikovsky. And I want to give you my unedited thoughts upon finishing this book, which was literally just right now. So I like this one. It's a four out of five. It's... I don't know exactly where I rank it within the three books that I've read. Ah, well, let's do that right now. The second book, Dragonfly Falling, was definitely the number one. Um, I'd say this one's probably number two. And, and then the uh, Empire in Black and Gold, the first one, would be number three. Um, it's a really solid book. It makes me very excited to continue on with the series. Um, it makes my um, appreciation... An interest in Adrian Tchaikovsky as a writer go even higher, uh, a writer that I find very interesting in terms of the sheer volume and um, broad ranging type books that, that he makes. I mean, he's writing books, I feel like right now, only slower than Sanderson. And, you know, he has books like this that are pure fantasy. I, I think he's established himself uh, now in, in modern time as a kind of purely sci-fi writer. And so far, what I've read of his sci-fi stuff, I've liked as well. Um, I'm going to be kind of devouring a lot of Tchaikovsky stuff going forward in the future because I'm really interested in the stuff that he has to, that he's writing and, and, um, and what he has to say. And so, yeah, this is another good, another really solid entry. Um, I, I feel like the series needs to be talked about more or, or I don't know about talked about more, but not forgotten because I, I'm worried what's happening to it is the thing that happens to so many great series is they just some, for some reason don't have that lasting power. They get popular in the time that they're written, but then they just kind of, you, you know, phase out of the public consciousness. And whereas you have things that will stay there forever, um, you know, things like Wheel of Time and, you know, I don't know what it takes for a book to have, you know, lasting power, but one of the things that I look at is when a book was written a while back, is it still just as good with the mindset of today as when it came out? Now, I didn't read it when it came out, but I only read things of the mindset of today. I never, I, to an extreme end, I don't put any sort of historical lenses on what I read. And when something like this, which feels fresh, it feels modern, if I didn't know the date on it, I'm pretty sure this was written in the 90s. If I didn't see the date on it, I would have assumed it came out in 2024. And that's the sign of a book that should be, at the very least, staying level or increasing over time as more people get on board and understanding how good it is. Um, because I haven't heard people say anything negative about the series. All I've heard, pretty singularly what I've heard, outside of a couple booktubers that I know and trust is that they read the series when they were younger. It was great. It helped getting them to fantasy and they don't really hear about it anymore. And I think that's an accurate description and a shame. And perhaps part of the reason is because people just don't associate Tchaikovsky with fantasy anymore because he's done that shift over to sci-fi. Maybe that's part of it. I don't know what it is, but people are missing out. Uh, this series is a really wonderful, wonderfully built world. Um, I mean, it just feels so vivid, so alive. The different sorts of people that are in it, they all have this these bug attributes. You know, you've got your mantis people, your dragonfly people, your uh, your wasps, your, uh, you know, lots of different, you know, beetles and all these things. And the societies that they've built that are unique to them and the way all of this weaves into this world and the geopolitical problems that are happening, it's great. And, and, I, and it just... I, I beg people to start getting more into this. I think it's a 10 book series. I'm for sure writing this thing out unless something hits a wall. Um, this one in particular though, what, what I noticed happened in the series is, is when I read the first book, I thought it was really good, but it was very, you know, on rails. You know, it only followed a few characters. They were all together. You know, when I'm looking for something, when I look at it, it's like an epic fantasy story, which is most certainly what this series is trying to be and what it is now. Um, is characters splitting off and going in different directions and getting to see the different parts of the world and, and getting that full epic scope to it. Um, scope is a big deal when it comes to these epic stories. And the first book didn't do that, although it was a great story. The second book blew it up. I mean, people are going all these different directions. They have these missions. We're getting a sense of the bigger picture here. There's these side quests, little missions. You could. It felt 
you know, it, it was moving it along and, and getting more epic as it goes along. The second one was intense. I mean, we had multiple sieges, uh, tons of battle sequences, pedal to the metal. This one had to slow it down a little bit. This book, the series isn't going to go, you know, nine books straight keeping pedal to the metal. It needed to pull off a little bit. Um, I've been told that this book is kind of in arcs and that the next book, book four, is the end of the first arc. I don't know if there's two arcs or three arcs. Um, math would say it would be either one of those. Um, but... So I'm really looking forward to reading the next one. But yeah, this is good. This is really good stuff. I mean, I, you're learning more about the characters. You're feeling them out more. You're starting to understand what, who, how, what differentiates them. It's hard sometimes when you re, when you read some of these books that have so many different characters and they all have these. Not only do they have their own personalities and things that are driving them, but they also have. They're all different breeds of different kinds of things, and they have their own characteristics that make them who they are. And so trying to piece this all together as we go along, sometimes it gets a little mushy, but by this point in the story, it's all kind of making sense. So when a new character has finally popped up in a POV that I haven't heard from for a while, I know exactly who they are. I get it. We're moving along. It's good stuff. Um, this story did a couple things in a little bit of a predictable manner in terms of the way that some people are shifting allegiances, which, you know, is a thing that happens in all these books. You know, you're going to have people that are uh, mostly from the bad to the good side that you see. And, it, you know, you can see this from coming kind of a mile away. Um, and, and that's fine. It, it worked out. Uh, but it also had some interesting, um, very interesting storylines here that involved an, a really fun heist. Um, we, what we got was really, really interesting diplomatic negotiations between these two different races. Uh, we saw a couple new cities that were vibrant and different and extremely unique and a joy to just learn about and to go along with that. I'm loving the different cultures in this book so much. Uh, it, you know, it's, it's brilliantly done. And, you know, I wanted to give this book a higher score, but the plot is very slow, you know, and I, I'm wondering what's going on with, the series because like, I don't understand where the series is going from here, which in some ways is good. In some ways is bad. Um, but it also feels like, how is this possibly going to take 10 books to tell this tale? It feels like the author could end this off at any point he chooses. You know, he's, he's not doing the George R. R. Martin thing where characters are getting further and further away from their goals to the point that bringing them all back together is going to be, um, uh, to, and I'm saying this intentionally, uh, a giant knot to be able to untangle, uh, which George is clearly in. Um, also known as the Miranese knot that uh, the Daenerys happens to find herself in. And how do you how do you get out of that, George? I don't know. Um, but but that's not what's happening here with Tchaikovsky. Tchaikovsky is right having these characters go in different spots. But it, you know, on the turn of a dime, they could they could finish their job. Um, they could either stop the threat or the threat could succeed or, or, or whatever it is in the book in the series could just end. So I'm very curious where it's going to go because we've had a couple developments here in this book that have made things feel deeper and um, more mystery that's going on than I initially suspected um, because the, the, the entire story here is that these, uh, these wasps are, um, are rather militaristic, but the larger part of the world here, the lowlands in particular and the spiderlands have said, you know, they're never going to attack us. Um, you know, and eventually they, they do. You know, it, it has a lot of this um, World War II Germany build up kind of feel to it. And a lot of people turning blind eyes when other people were being attacked because it wasn't them. And finally, uh, you know, there's a straw that breaks the camel's back and everybody has to rally together to try to stop this threat. And, and so it's, it's, a, it's a basic plot. It makes sense. And, you know, the real world connections are easy to, to find. And... But as it gets more complex and we get some of these different fantasy elements being dropped into it, I mean, we have this magical box, for instance, um, that we don't exactly know what it does. But it's very important that we need to get our hands on it. Uh, and you, you could tell more of these things are going to be coming out and I'm going to be eating them up as they come. So, yeah, this is a, this is a very, very wonderful series. I'm confident that uh, I'm going to find many more five stars in this series uh, in, the, in the seven more that I have to read. I think it's 10. I, I've said 10 so many times that I'm just going to stick to it. Um, and yeah, I, I, come read the series with me. Join on if you haven't. And hopefully I've sold it a little bit to you. But if you like modern epic fantasies, this is uh, this is one you need to be reading. So 
Join the journey with me. Come talk to me about it in the comments. Come talk to me about it in Discord as we read along together. I would love uh, to go on that adventure with you. So that is it for me. Thank you so much for watching this review. And as always, happy reading to you. Thanks again to all my patrons with a special shout out to my Ascendant tier and Librarian tier patrons, Amy, Anna G, CJ, Doust, Darren, JD, Jonathan, Nathan T, Nev's Book Channel, Orthodoxia, Ron Reich, Russell, Ryan L, Slay, Sydney Baker, Tahir, Zion, Anna, Andra, Blair, Brock, Evan, Harry W, Joe UK, Cat Mick, Michael Sugarman, Sky, and Tyler. Thanks for sticking to the end of this video, and if you want to watch some more content from my channel, click over here and I've got some good videos for you. Thanks so much.